Hello, my sock universe. Poor stressful days today, and actually, I have to say, these videos are kind of a little bit of a way of finding some sanity on my part. But yeah, I barely even find the time. But you know, it is phases in life where things are a little bit more hectic. I hope it will calm down soonish again. Anyway, uh, the main topic of today's video will be the Bundesliga, but then I'll round up a few other leagues as well uh, with interesting results over the weekend. Um, but I know I have to rethink the whole process because A, I don't have a Bundesliga jersey yet, so this means in my acquisition of jerseys I probably should prioritize the Bundesliga and League A a little bit more over other leagues uh, to get a little bit more variety there. At least of the league I have PSG and we will talk briefly about League 1. Um, and yeah, I will, as, as I said, I will add on, we look in the Netherlands and we also will look into uh, Greece because uh, there's also some interesting stuff happening. But let's start with the Bundesliga where, um, again, a round full of goals. Uh, what Spain was disappointing, I think the Bundesliga made more than up for it. I started already early. On Friday, I typically decide to watch the Bundesliga game. Um, if it's a nice one, and they usually put nicer games there, but you know, there was Milan playing at the same time, so Milan is priority. I just know I turn on the game, I went to the bathroom, I came back, and it was 1-0. Guerrero in the first minute, Borussia Dortmund against Kern had already already scored and it was an onslaught by Dortmund. Um, Royce in the 29th made it 2 0. At a point, you know, uh, Kern tried to do a little bit, but uh, frankly, Dortmund was better. They just uh, had some trouble converting chances at first, but Sancho, when if in the 48th, again, right out of the gate, makes it uh, 3 0, and then everyone thinks they're safe. And then the one weakness of Dortmund is showing. They are playing open football, attacking. They have problem creating chances. They have problem with giving up balls in the midfield. And they have problem with the defense a little bit. That's um, where I'm always a little bit worried about Dortmund. And Ut makes it 3-1. But I think the game was never, never in doubt. And then the Haaland show continues. Um, I'm probably less impressed than most observers he makes two more goals, so this is actually five goals in two games, and all of them as a substitute, uh, with having very little time. I think we played less than 60 minutes for Dortmund so far. Um, the 4-1 was more or less a tap-in, although you have to get yourself in that position. Uh, the 5-1 was a sublime goal, where he just uh, ran to the touchline and curled it in really, really nicely taken. But... Why I want to hold back is I want him to do this against a Bayern or a Leipzig and so on. Uh, not against opposition like Augsburg and um, Köln, who I don't consider the class of the Bundesliga by any stretch of the imagination. And for that reason, let's hold back. It's sensational what he does. He's young. I've seen him in Austria. He is scoring like crazy. I want him... I want to see him regularly against big opposition. Uh, Saturday, I think it was all about uh, Frankfurt-Leipzig, but first let's talk about Union uh, beating Augsburg 2-0. That was... Um, yeah, Union continues their goal good run. I thought they would go down. Nope. Gladbach-Mainz, a uh, crucial win for Mainz, uh, for Gladbach, especially since Mainz took a very early lead. Um, uh, already in the 11th minute through Quaison. Um And Gladbach, you know, after their poor showing at Schalke, you really were wondering, can they respond? Yes, they can. And it's down to Mainz, despite playing well, not defending set pieces very well. Player in 24th makes it 1-1. And then after in the second half, late, um, makes it even 2-1. Again, uh, was a free kick in. He hits it with his shin and it goes in. At the time, yes, Gladbach at that point had maybe a little bit more of the, of the game, but then Mainz came a knocking and really should have scored maybe one uh, goal. And in that phase, there's a ball that the Mainz goalkeeper is heading out. The ball falls to Neuhaus, who out of 40 meters uh, crosses it into the net. The keeper cannot get into. Uh, I let you pick which one is more. Um, 
with Rage goes better than one by Illicic against Torino or this one by Neuhaus. This one for Neuhaus basically sealed the deal, whereas the Illicic goal was kind of an add-on. But yeah, um, good game and a vital win for Gladbach, who have now a bear of a schedule. I oh, know, that's Leipzig, and we'll talk about Leipzig. But yeah, Gladbach plays in Leipzig next, so we will know a lot about Gladbach and Leipzig. Speaking of Leipzig, their great run of scoring at least three goals in eight consecutive games came to an end in a rather weird fashion. Completely dominated Frankfurt in the first half. Just don't take the chances. Coach already saying, ah, the whole week it didn't go that well. And it was a freak occurrence that suddenly uh, Toure in the first half makes the one, uh, in early in the second half, Makes it 1 0, and Leipzig never finds a way back. Actually, Frankfurt can keep the game open, uh, sitting uh, tight at the back. Again, a rather lucky win for Frankfurt, but maybe this is what they need to get going because we know that this team that really uh, surprised everyone in Europe uh, this spring or even last fall. Uh, they don't didn't, don't didn't seem that right, and Kostic in the 94th makes it 2 0, and Leipzig loses the leaders who actually had a s sizable gap. Now they're, they're lose, losing again, and we may have to see. And Leipzig now has to play Gladbach at home and Bayern away. After those two rounds, I think we'll know whether uh, Leipzig is ready to become champions. Freiburg with a shock loss to Paderborn, uh, 2 0. Wolfsburg against Hertha. I'm unfortunately the former last coach. Uh, Glasner is having a rough stretch with Wolfsburg and they have never been really convincing. Finally, um, they get a goal in the 68th and have a 1 0 lead and were fully in control of the game. And then, uh, two, two, uh, two, uh, what's his name? Toro Nariga in the 74th gets out of nowhere the 1 1. And in the last minute, Luke Bacchio even gets the win for Hertha, a win for um, Jürgen Klinsmann. But to be honest, that was lucky. And yeah, the heat is a little bit on in Wolfsburg. And then Bayern Schalke, I mean, I didn't want to say it. I expected a clear win for Bayern, but that it was so one-sided as it turned out to be. I didn't expect that. Um, or in the first 10 minutes, Bayern should have made more than the one goal by Lewandowski. The one thing I have, have, have to say, Schalke kept it open and they hit the bar, uh, I think in the 11th minute, so they could have gotten the equalizer. But that was the last time as soon as, I mean, uh, Bayern scored two more times. I think Müller and again Le 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 Lewandowski and both goals were uh, taken away by offside, but it was not, uh, at least the second one was at the beginning not very clear why, but it was I think three passes before uh, the goal was happening, there was walls and offside. Um, but you had the feeling if Schalke can get with, with just one nil into the break, they might actually regroup. But then Müller makes right in the second minute stoppage time makes it 2-0 uh, for Bayern and all hell broke loose uh, in the second half then uh, Avalanche and it's almost what I expected I, I, I would, if I would have betted I would have said 3-0 3-0 for Bayern because Bayern is despite the in injuries they don't look that bad Goretzka scores a great goal against his former club in the 50th Thiago adds one on that was also nice leg and Gnabry makes one coming I think off the bench if I'm not um, mistaken. Yes, he came off the, off the bench. 5 0, and Bayern looks dangerous again. And they have so many injuries, and they still. <sighs> I would not bet against Bayern. Uh, I told you already when they had this kind of weird fall, I never bet against Bayern. They look uh, really like the team to beat again. In two rounds, we have the matchup against Leipzig, and then we'll probably know a lot more. First game, Bayern, when they were still under Kovac, dominated Leipzig and should have won in Leipzig. I didn't see anything of the Sunday games. I know that an Austrian made a, heel go a, a goal with his heel against um, Werder Bremen 3-0, and Bayer Leverkusen wins 3-0 against Düsseldorf. And so we have now very tight top of the table. I think the top four uh, yeah, are all within four points. Leipzig 40, Bayern 39, Gladbach 38, and Dortmund 36. And in a way, 
you get the feeling that yeah in four weeks time i think bayern will have a four point lead kind kind of, kind of and it will be dortmund that might be hanging with them we have to see how Leipzig will recover from that. I think Gladbach cannot yet sustain it. Leverkusen and Schalke are uh, at, 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 at a distance. I think it will be really hard for them to get back into the business. We see Frankfurt is climbing. Wolfsburg keeps falling. Um, when I look now... Um, when I look at this midfield, I think Hertha just seems to be about okay. Um, Köln has been continuously falling in a way, Mainz uh, also, <laughs> Bremen, Bremen reminds me, I heard it today, I thought it this weekend, Bremen reminds me a little bit of Stuttgart last uh, season, where you don't have the feeling, uh, or, or I, I think they're not yet aware that they can be re relegated, but let's see. Paderborn, Düsseldorf are the bottom feeders, the bottom dwellers at the moment, and I think this will probably stay that way. Briefly, uh, Liga, Vietnamese Rennes playing 1 1, Marseille. Uh, I saw the Halle. Halle's a very awful 0 0 against Angers without inspiration. Brest beats Amiens 2 1, Monaco, shock loss at home 3 1 to Strasbourg. Montpellier 2 1 against Dijon, Reims loses at home to Metz. Saint Etienne against Nîmes, then. Lyon beats Toulouse, and Toulouse is losing now the 11th or 12th, however you can count it, game in a row. Heard today the bad joke. Well, it's their name suggests that they're losing. It's stupid stuff, but yeah. Uh, some people might, might think funny. Uh, not in a tribute game for Emiliano Salah. Uh, whether you actually playing in uh, Argentina types churches is not really... Um, I think that celebration took all of it out, out of Nantes and they lose late to Bordeaux 1-0 and then um, Lille loses to PSG when Neymar scores two goals with one of course celebrating Kobe Bryant with a 20, 24 or something like that. Um, yeah, he claims to be in the best shape of his life, let's see. Around this time, last two years he got injured so let's see if he can stay fit and then and health and then we can make a judgment on how great he is but it seems like that um, he's getting back in form and PSG also looking overall quite kind of comfortable on top of the table Marseille is 10 points behind Rennes and Montpellier <laughs> Montpellier is up there now so Rennes 37 not with that loss France is just crazy I mean uh, Rennes looks a little bit safe at the moment with four points but uh, watch out Lyon Lyon might uh, catch them and I'm, I also don't count Lille out not we have to see uh, it's a very broad midfield I mean uh, between Montpellier in fourth and Saint-Étienne in 15th there are only five points and there are many teams with 29 points as I can see um, so everything can change at any time if I look at the bottom um, there's Metz Dijon um, Kind of or, or with this with this sense, I'm yeah, Nim and Toulouse are the ones that look in trouble, and I think uh, especially Toulouse, probably the one that will get relegated. Let's switch to the Eredivisie, uh, where we had one big result. First of all, Alkma win, wins at Herrenveen, uh, two one, so they get back on the uh, winning track. Feyenoord wins three two uh, at Heracles, so uh, that's something. But um, most importantly, Groningen beats Ajax 2-1. Uh, and so Ajax's uh, lead is again a little bit mini uh, cut in half, more or less. And PSV only manages a 1-1 against Twente. So if we look now at the table, it's Ajax three points ahead of uh, Alkmaar. We have on the weekend Ajax against PSV, so that's a huge matchup. Uh, Feyenoord then with serious distance, but we have not seen them that high and we have not seen PSV that low for a long time. Even uh, William Dway is now up there and we have to see how the rest will uh, pan out. But in any case, it's uh, very interesting things happen in Netherlands. I still will say Ajax will win that title. And we also had a big, a big results in Greece. Um, Less so, uh, um, what Panathinaikos gets another win, they're in good format at, at, at the moment. Um, but I and Olympiakos uh, only manage a goalless draw. So, Pauk uh, yesterday with a 1 0 win over Volus 
could manage to get back in first place. And so we have them a point ahead of Olympiakos. Uh, so we have the lead change that was kind of, um, I don't want to say bound to happen, but you know, this is such a tight race in Greece that anything might happen. Um, Ike has 38 points and Panathinaikos is uh, now in fourth and Aris might stop. So I think really the, the top four in Greece might actually end up being the top four at the end of the season. Well, that ends my little trip, final trip through Europe. Um, as I said, I need to probably think a little bit how I will uh, do the videos because we have not talked Premier League, but I might actually group them geographically somewhat together. I know I can talk every weekend about Serie A, about La Liga and about the Premier League for sure and probably the Bundesliga. Those four I can uh, talk for sure, but when I put in the other, other results, I might have to split them over. Let's see how it, how it goes on while I decide, but I like the idea of having shorter videos. Anyway, of the games that I talked today, let me know what you watched, how you agree or disagree with my assessments. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Also, you know, if you have Bundesliga jerseys that you don't, don't want to have, just message me. We might get something. And yeah, I will talk to you soon uh, after the midweek games. And the button then, bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.